My name is Amashni. Welcome to this series of lessons on area. In this series, we're going to find out ways of understanding the area of flat shapes and the surface area of some more interesting shapes. Zandi and Tobeka will be joining me as we discover what surface area is all about. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to Find the area formula of a rectangle and show that shapes made from the same parts have the same area. What do you think when you hear the words surface area? I asked a few learners what ideas they had about surface area. area? Surface area is an area that needs to be covered. Like for instance, if you're going to paint your house, you would say, what is the area that needs to be covered to paint? And you'd buy that amount of paint for that certain area. Surface area is everywhere, it's like the covering of my book, covering of a bag, you know, stuff like that. Surface area is a cover of a roof, uh, which keeps the rain from coming down. I think it's the number of small squares which fit into the space that the carpet takes. An um, area of like, length and the breadth and what you can fit things into. I think it's a carpet and the space it takes. Surface area is the size of a soccer field or top of a table. And why do you think it is important for us to calculate the surface area of objects? I thought about all the work involved in building a block of flats. The tiler needs to calculate the surface areas of the floors before he can buy the materials he needs. The painter needs to calculate the surfaces of the walls inside and outside that he wants to paint before he can buy the correct amount of paint. So the surface area is the space taken up with the paint of the painter or the tiles of the tiler. And it's important to know these values before you can start a project so that you can get the right amount of materials. But how are we going to measure surface area? Haley said something important earlier. I think it's the number of small squares which fit into the space that the carpet takes. She is quite right, but she didn't say how big or small they needed to be. We need a way to measure area that is standard so that everyone knows what we're talking about. What if you were to ask a painter to buy five small squares of paint? He will not know what you're talking about. We measure area using square units. But what do we mean by a square unit? When we measure length, we use millimetres or centimetres or metres, which are the standard units of measurement. But when we measure area, we are not just measuring one length. For example, if you have to carpet this room, how would you go about measuring it to find out how much carpet you will need? And then, what measurements will you use at the shop to describe the amount or size of the carpet you need? Let's see if we can get a better understanding of what we will need. Have a look at this diagram. Here is a rectangle drawn on a square grid. Can you figure out what the area of the rectangle should be? Let's see if Zandi and Tobeka can help us. Zandi simply counted the squares. Tobeka counted the rows and the number of squares in each row. Then she multiplied. There are four rows of six. So in total she counted 24 squares. They both came to the answer of 24. So we say that the area is 24 square units. When working with area, we make use of a standard unit called a square unit. The name square unit tells us that our unit of measurement is a square. The length of each side is one unit and that unit can be anything we like. So this means we could write one centimeter by one centimeter and this would give us an area of one centimeter squared. Now here we could have 
one millimeter by one millimeter and this would give us an area of one millimeter squared. Here we could have one meter by one meter and this multiplies and gives us an area of one meter squared. Here we could have one kilometer by one kilometer and this would give us one kilometer squared. When we measure area we want to know how many of these squares fit inside the area we're trying to measure. Here is another rectangle. How would you go about finding the area of this rectangle? You could draw in the lines and count the squares, but there is an easier method. Now any side of the rectangle can be called a base. So if I call this side the base, this would make the side parallel to this also a base. And we would call these two sides the height. If we had to call this side here the base, the side parallel would also be called a base and these sides here would be the height. The height and the base need to be perpendicular to each other. This means that the height and the base intersect at 90 degrees. So if we call the bottom side of the rectangle in the figure the base, then the length of the base is the number of squares in each row and the height is the number of rows. Using these terms height and base, can you write a formula to find the area of a rectangle? We can find area by multiplying the length of the base by the length of the height. By convention, we represent area by A, height by H, and base by B. So we can write the formula area is equal to base multiplied by perpendicular height. Now you may have learned before that the area of a rectangle is found by multiplying the length times the breadth. Do you see that in this diagram, the height and the base is the same thing? In the rectangle, the length and the breadth is the same measurement as the height and the base, but this changes for other shapes. So it is more accurate to use height and base. Let's calculate the area of this rectangle. We said that the base was the number of squares in each row, so that was 1, 2, 3. That means that the base is 3 units. If we look at the height, we said the height was the number of rows, and that makes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. So we can write area is equal to 3 units multiplied by 6 units, which gives us 18 units squared. Now let's see if we can use what we know about the surface area of a rectangle to find the areas of other shapes. Now here's a challenge for you. Take a careful look at these puzzle pieces. I have used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces to make the E shape. Now, using exactly the same shapes, I can rearrange them to make the F shape. Isn't that cool? I've used the same pieces to make both shapes. Now what can we say about the area of the shapes E and F? Did you see that the area covered by E is the same as the area covered by F? Now we don't know how to find the area of these shapes yet. All we know is to find the area of a rectangle. Now what do you think we can do? Let's see if Zandi and Tobeka have any ideas. Why don't we mix up the shapes? 
Okay, well, I guess that would work because the total surface area should be the same no matter how we mix up and arrange the shapes. I think we should try and make a rectangle because we know how to work out the surface area and we know about a rectangle. <laughs> Well, they are right on track. You can make a rectangle or a square from these shapes. Let's see if they get it. They got it. Tibet was right on track about the total area being the same. Two figures have the same area if the one can be cut up into different pieces and all these pieces can be rearranged to cover the other shape completely without any overlapping. So if I can find the area of the rectangle, that will be the same area for the square and the E shape and the F shape. And we already know how to work out the area of a rectangle quite easily, don't we? By multiplying the base and the height, of course. Not so hard after all, was it? Let's recap what we have learned today. In this lesson, we have learned two very important things about surface area. The formula for finding the area of a rectangle a or area is equal to the base B multiplied by the height H and shapes made from same parts have the same area. Here is a task for you to try out with a classmate. Use your own pace as a unit to find the surface area of your classroom floor. Draw a diagram of your working out. Till next time. Goodbye. <laughs>